So we've derived a very simple formula for optimal uh, monetary policy. And we've also uh, estimated, discussed the value of the different suffusion statistics in that formula. So now we can put everything together to describe what the optimal behavior of the Fed should be. Uh, so the optimal nominal interest rate, what we said, uh, which we denoted by I star. So we said that it was given by I star is equal to I, which is a current nominal interest rate, minus U minus U star, that's the unemployment gap, divided by uh, TUDI, that's the monetary multiplier. Okay, so this is saying that when you have a positive unemployment gap, too much unemployment, you want to reduce your interest rate uh, by an amount that's given by the size of the unemployment gap and the, uh, you know, the ratio between the size of the unemployment gap and the monetary multiplier. And the idea is that you just want to reduce interest rate to bring the unemployment to its efficient level. Okay, but now what we said is that um, we showed that a mid-range estimate of the monetary multiplier uh, that the UDI is equal to 0 0.5. And so if we put these things together, what do we get? We get that uh, combining this thing, we get that I star is the current interest rate minus one over the UDI, that's going to be two times U minus U star. So that's a very simple uh, policy rule. This is just um, this is just saying that you always want, if you have um, at any point in time an unemployment gap that opens, you want to adjust your nominal interest rate by twice the size of the unemployment gap. Okay, so this means that uh, so for instance so for any unemployment gap measured in percentage point the response of uh, monetary policy the optimal response of course of monetary policy is two times uh, the gap. So that's pretty simple. So for instance, um, if the unemployment gap is uh, one percentage point, so your unemployment rate is inefficiently high by one percentage point, uh, the Fed funds rate um, should drop by two percentage point. That's just an example, uh, and you know that. Uh, and if your uh, unemployment gap is negative, say minus one percentage point, and so your unemployment rate is inefficiently uh, tight, uh, then your uh, Fed fund rate should not drop, but your Fed fund rate should uh, increase by two percentage point. Okay, and and of course this scales up, uh, depend you know, and then the linearly this scales up or down linearly with the size of the unemployment gap. Um, and so this is quite a helpful rule, and it also then allows you to understand a bit uh, what's, <clears throat> what's going on in the microeconomy. So uh, let me bring up here our estimates of the uh, unemployment gap in the U.S. Uh, so this is the U.S. unemployment gap uh, as, you know, the gap between the unemployment rate and uh, the efficient Unemployment rate measure with a simple formula, u star equals square root of uv. And uh, so th this, uh, this is quite helpful to understand a bit what's happening. So for instance, look at the Great uh, Recession here. Uh, 
you see that the unemployment gap opened up all the way uh, and it really went up all the way to about uh, six percentage points. So that's a huge uh, increase in the unemployment rate that was very rapid um, at the onset of the Great Recession. So, you know, if the Fed expected that the unemployment gap would open by six percentage points, what should they have done? You know, what the total amount of monetary policy that they should have done, then we know that uh, using our formula, uh, using our formula, we know that the Fed funds rate should uh, drop because here it's a positive unemployment gap. You have too much unemployment, so the Fed fund rate should drop by uh, six times two is equal to 12 uh, percentage points. So that's a policy recommendation that comes out of our formula and this unemployment gap. But of course, the thing is that, that and that's key, is that the Fed fund rate was around 5% uh, in um, 2007, 2008, uh, at the beginning of the recession. And so, you know, you're at 5%, you have to drop by 12 percentage points uh, what's going to happen? Well, it means that you have to go. This means that uh, FFR should go into negative territory. Uh, and of course, that's not possible because we have a zero lower bound on the nominal interest rate. The nominal interest rate can go below zero. And so what comes out of this immediately is that given the size of the unemployment gap and given what optimal policy should be. Here, what we would anticipate is that the ZLB is going to become binding. The zero lower bound is going to become binding because the Fed wants to cut, you know, 12 percentage points over five percentage points. That's minus seven percentage points. That's not possible. So uh, this, we would have predicted that the ZLB uh, is binding. And indeed, that's exactly what happened. Uh, the ZLB became uh, binding very quickly. Um, and but here it's not a surprise why it happened is because the unemployment gap was so large and starting from a fairly you know reasonable Fed fund rate of five percent you very quickly hit the zero lower bound. Uh, so thanks to our uh, optimal policy analysis we can un understand this type of situation. And it's not surprising that the ZLB became binding and you know given the size of the response that should have happened you know minus seven percentage points that's a huge response so it's not surprising that the ZLB was binding. Um, for as long as it was. Uh, so our policy analysis can make sense of all of this.